Good afternoon. Um, I would like to say also thank you very much to Boston Scientific for giving me this opportunity. And of course, to apologize for my Spanglish after these two excellent speakers. The um, content of my presentation is going to be our small experience during the last few months uh, with the introduction and the um, uh, making of thermoplasty in some of our severe patients with asthma. We work in one of the oldest hospitals in Europe. My center was uh, founded in uh, 1400 after a medieval plague in Barcelona. And it was in a building near La Ramblas. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was moved to a fantastic modernistic facility that now has been considered UNESCO uh, World Heritage. For the last few years, a new brand new hospital uh, has been opened in the top of the modernistic part, which is the white one you can see on the left picture, and this is where we work. It's a general university hospital uh, with about 700 hospitalization beds, attending a population of about 300, 350 inhabitants from Barcelona. Uh, the respiratory department is a uh, it uh, has about 14 to 15 consultants and has a severe asthma unit, specific severe asthma unit, and also, of course, a bronchoscopy unit. Which challenge did we have to overcome to start with thermoplasty uh, in, our, in our center? Of course, institutional approval wasn't easy. This is a public funding hospital, and uh, our situation here is a, a bit complicated at the moment. We had to knock the door uh, several times, and finally we could convince the authorities to start with the procedure, although to be honest we have a limited amount of uh, uh, patients to include every year. Training is for us important but not a big deal. I mean having experience with bronchoscopies and having a severe asthma unit helps a lot and also uh, Boston Scientific gives clinical uh, training programs for people starting with thermoplasty, and I think that is very, very helpful. Patient selection, that is one of the deals that for us is uh, important, and I'll come back later to, to this point. Our expectations, uh, has been shown on these presentations, were to improve our severe patients. Basically, the clinical outcomes, such as exacerbations, quality of life, control of the disease, and so. And perhaps, but this data is still unknown, the long-term benefits in terms of uh, medication use, economical burden, we have seen a very nice presentation about the five years effect, which is also very promising. The FDA indication says that thermoplasty is indicated for treatment of severe asthma patients, adults, that are not well controlled with a combination of inhaled steroids and beta-2 agonists. Of course, they have to be able to uh, go to bronchoscopy, and the contraindications are basically um, uh, implanted electronic devices, uh, um, pacemakers, and so. But is, is that enough? Asthma, and especially severe asthma, is a very complex disease. We know that several factors are influencing this particular group of patients with asthma. The therapeutic compliance is very important. The comorbidities are frequent on this severe group of patients. And also there is an increasing physiopathological evidence of different asthma types, phenotypes, endotypes, or whatever types, that may the, makes the disease much more complicated with much more specific therapies going on. In, the, in this context, apart from the FDA indication, what we try to select is our patients in these conditions. They have to be in a therapeutic step higher than four, according to the GINA guidelines, with a chronically uncontrolled asthma and impaired quality of life, and this has to be in, demonstrated in repetitive questionnaires during time. 
the patient has to complete an asthma education program and the selection has to be done by an expert asthma team evaluation, including a bronchoscopy for differential diagnosis. Of course, the patient needs to understand well what is thermoplasty offering. And regarding EFV1 or comorbidities, although most of the trials and the information is uh, in patients with EFV1 above 60%, there is some limited information in more uh, severe patients. We think these two factors, EFV1 and comorbidity, should be discussed individually. There are no existing criteria on how to select the patients regarding to smooth muscle, remodeling, phenotypes. Perhaps in the future with new techniques, uh, endoscopic techniques uh, may help. The procedure is postponed if uh, the patient has an active or a recent uh, exacerbation. If the asthma is very brittle with life uh, threatening attacks on the previous months, it's probably better to wait for an instability period and when the bronchoscopy risk is high. This is a summary of our first complete patients. Uh, before thermoplasty, on the left uh, is the gender and the age the hospital attendancy with a big number of uh, exacerbations and hospital admissions, the number of asthma drugs, the quality of life according to the Janiper, Dr. Janiper questionnaire, asthma control test, so they all had uh, an impaired quality of life and uncontrolled asthma, and a variable EFV1 for the last year. What about the procedure? It's also standard. We know from the, from the trials that has to be done by a conventional bronchoscope in three sessions separate about three to four weeks interval with consecutive radiofrequency activations and each session will take about 45 to 60 minutes. Also we try to add a little bit more of uh, information to, to this criteria. The patient comes to our uh, department on clinical stability for at least a month before the first procedure and achieving the best possible EFV1. The patient has to carry with his usual treatment and we also give a short course of glucocorticoids if the patient is not regularly taking it. We are doing in the standard bronchoscopy suite and the sedation, we use deep sedation with propofol and remifentanil and the patient is intubated with a flexible tube. We know that this has been done in different ways, but for us this is very important because these patients cough a lot. And having a good cough control and also ventilatory safety is, is, is important. Uh, with this sedation and the patient intubated, it's very easy to work quicker and also our sensation is the number of applications can be higher than when the patient is uh, moving or coughing and the sedation is, uh, is um, less, less deep. Also, secretion is a problem during the procedure. Some patients have hypersecretion and having the patient intubated helps to remove the bronchoscope and the catheter to clean it as many times as, as need. Uh, Two or three bronchoscopies participate during the procedure and anesthesiologists is not really difficult but requires concentration and it takes about 45 to 90 minutes. And what about the number of activations? We all have similar anatomy but we are all different. Some of the bronchi are very easy to access, some of the bronchi, the apical ones, are not that easy. And it's not really a big rule about how many activations and we don't really know when the catheter starts reducing the effectiveness if this really happens. After the procedure, the patient remains in observation for three to four hours and is uh, discharged uh, if that is possible, although uh, the patient remains overnight if it's required. We intensify bronchodilators and we start uh, intense physiotherapy because also helping the patient to remove the secretions after the procedure is, uh, is helpful for them. Of course, we offer the patient a telephone contact and a weekly BC, and we have a follow-up protocol. This is a summary of our clinical results. After four to nine months of follow-up, after we finish, we complete our first patient. 
we have had four good responders and one non-responder. We don't know exactly why. The non-responder patient had mild, very mild, but had smoking history, and also uh, uh, was a lady with uh, bronchomalacia. We have seen frequent side effects, although they are uh, generally mild and limited to the first uh, day or couple of days, as the clinical trials have shown. Uh, in, on, the, on the table, you uh, can see the change on the, in the asthma control test before and after thermoplasty, and the third patient was the non-responder. This is an important slide that has to be interpreted with precaution and is just an estimation of our center. Considering that we have a complete five patients and uh, is, it means 15 catheters plus the procedures and the care after the thermoplasty, the total cost of this uh, treatment in our patients was above 51,000 euros. On the column, is the hospital and attendancy the year before and the period of follow-up after thermoplasty. And except for the third patient, the non-responder, the reduction of hospital attendancy is dramatic. So the hospital attendancy, direct cost of hospital attendancy, I mean the, what the hospital is receiving from the Spanish government for attending these patients has been reduced in about two 1,500 euros per month, which means that the treatment would be paid back in about 20 months. I, again, would like to repeat that this is uh, data from our center that has to be interpreted with precaution because it's a limited number of patients and it's our particular conditions, but it's also interesting. And it's not considering the indirect cost or the indirect saves. For example, two of our patients are, have been able to go back to work. Need to chances for the future, at least for us. Of course, we need to increase, and we are determined to increase the end and the experience. Um, has already been mentioned in this session, it's very important to have a better understanding of the mechanism of action. We need to recruit not only patients, but also severe uh, experts, uh, severe asthma experts. Um, probably to learn more about uh, the mechanism of action will help to identify specific candidates in the future, perhaps, and this will help for the efficiency of the treatment. And for us, it's also important, our, our authorities, to know more about the long-term insert and the cost-benefit. So if any of you are interested in starting with thermoplasty, I. I really give, uh, we really give our support. It's important uh, to have a good institutional support from your centers, to have a, a department organization and appropriate training. Again, Boston Scientific is a good help always for that. The patient selection has to be done by an expert asthma team. Bronchial thermoplasty is more a severe asthma treatment than a new bronchoscopy technique. The it's important to have a defined protocol and a standard procedure, and also we believe in the importance of networking, sharing results, and having patient registry lead or at least supervised by scientific societies. I'd like to finish, thank you all my department and also the hospital direction. Uh, Dr. Plaza is the head of our department, and Maria and Joanna, who were our first patients, they feel much better. They even were to the uh, Spanish television. And um, also finishing, thank you, Dr. Ana Muñoz, who is our clinical fellow working hard, and Maria Parrilla, the Spanish delegate from Boston Scientific that has been very helpful for us during the last few months. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>